Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saturday, the 3rd of November, 2022, of the first week of Advent and First Friday, is the memorial of St. Francis Xavier, priest. What should I do in my so great tribulations and necessities? Did you not strengthen me with your holy works? Daily Prayer Rouse my spirit from complacency and stir my faith to see you act today. Give me boldness to live and proclaim the message of that kingdom to this generation. Amen. Introduction to the Liturgy of the Word Saint Francis Xavier, a founding member of the Jesuit order, preached the gospel to the peoples of the East. In India, Francis touched the hearts of the natives with his poverty, but in Japan, where he found the feudal lords demanded formality, Francis approached suitably dressed as an ambassador. Sir Walter Scott eulogized him thus, quote, The most rigid Protestant and the most indifferent philosopher cannot deny to him the courage and patience of a martyr with the good sense, resolution, ready wit, and address of the best negotiator that ever went on a temporal embassy." Unquote. In ten short years, Francis established missions in India, Ceylon, Malacca, and Japan. He died near the coast of China in 1552. The Epistle The Merciful One will show you mercy when you cry out. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 19. Thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, O people of Zion who dwell in Jerusalem, no more will you weep. He will be gracious to you when you cry out. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you the bread you need and the water for which you thirst. No longer will your teacher hide himself, but with your own eyes you shall see your teacher, while from behind a voice shall sound in your ears. This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or to the left. He will give rain for the seed that you sow in the ground, and the wheat that the soil produces will be rich and abundant. On that day your flock will be given pasture, and the lamb will graze in spacious meadows. The oxen and the asses that till the ground will eat silage tossed to them with shovel and pitchfork. Upon every mountain and lofty hill there will be streams of running water. On the great day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall, the light of the moon will be like that of the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times greater like the light of seven days. On the day the Lord binds up the wounds of his people, he will heal the bruises left by his blows. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 147 Responsorial Blessed are all who wait for the Lord. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Sing praise to God, for He is gracious. It is fitting to praise Him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel. He gathers. Blessed are all who wait for the Lord. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 
He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Blessed are all who wait for the Lord. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Blessed are all who wait for the Lord. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, our king. He it is who will save us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel At the sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation. He will be gracious to you when you cry out. How many times have you brought a problem before God and received an immediate answer? Maybe sometimes, but not often, right? So why did Isaiah promise that as soon as God hears, he will answer you? Isaiah 30, 19. The short answer is that it's a mystery. We don't know why some prayers get answered more quickly than others, or at least we don't know yet. Surely it will all be made clear in heaven. In the meantime, we have to trust the Lord and rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us. Isaiah seems to be referring to this when he says, While from behind a voice shall sound in your ears, this is the way, walk in it. Isaiah 30, 21 That word, that voice, is the Holy Spirit whispering in our hearts. It's the voice of the Spirit urging us to keep walking in the way of the Lord, no matter what. But while we're walking in trust and waiting for greater clarity from the Lord, it may help to keep a few things in mind. There are times when God seems like he isn't answering our prayers, when in fact he is working on them. We may not be able to see his ultimate plan right away, 
But Isaiah wants us to know that God is not ignoring us. He is cultivating our faith and bringing us to greater holiness. For example, we may equate an immediate answer from God with an immediate solution to our problem. Maybe we are praying for our spouse to finally seek help in dealing with an addiction. But even as we pray and wait, God can use this situation to build up the virtue of patience in us even as we endure the struggle. Or we may want God to do something for us, like put the right job in our path. But God may be inviting us to be like the persistent widow in Jesus' parable and keep on looking ourselves. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 God is always gracious to us even when we can't see it. Isaiah 30 19 May we always place our faith in Him. Lord, help me to trust that you are always caring for me. Amen. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Shirley, residential realtor for many years. As a professional, I welcome and encourage you to contact me whether you are buying or selling a home. Or if you know like-minded people like yourself that you want me to help guide through this overwhelming process. Whether in the Dallas Metroplex or across the country, I'd love to assist in your real estate needs. Click the link in the description below to land on my website for a plethora of real estate information. Thank you and blessings upon you and yours.